surfer and the Transurfing Curious. My name is Renee Garcia, guys, and this is Transurfing TV. And today on Transurfing TV, I'm going to be talking about getting smacked in the face by a quantum 2x4. <laughs> something that happened to me, I'm sure something that's happened to you watching at home, and how really the concept of advantage plays such a huge part of this perspective of mine getting hit by a quantum two by four right in the face. Um, what these events can look like in our reality, oftentimes again, bad or unfortunate event like a death or a divorce or a near-death experience or a midlife crisis or something like that, but how this is ultimately the best thing that could ever happen to you. I'm going to talk about what happened to me. For those of you that don't know, I'm about five, almost six years out, no more like six to seven years out, but it's allowed me some time to gain some perspective on what actually transpired for me and how at the time I thought it was the absolute worst thing that has ever happened to me and now as I get further and further from the incident I realize it was the absolute best thing that ever happened to me. Um, what the response can be to an, ex uh, to an experience like this and then obviously what the result is when I break it all down, it is going to make sense to you. And maybe you have an event in your life that you could start to frame in a little bit of a different direction, viewing it as your, as your quantum field, your alternative space, giving you a gift, which is a new direction. Before I get started, remember to like this video and comment and subscribe. Join us on the Facebook group, International Transurfing Institute Facebook group, y'all, and the course, Teachable Reality 2.0, down below. All the links are below to everything your transurfing heart desires. Check them out. So, being hit by a quantum 2 by 4 what does that even mean? Well, for me, what it means is a moment in my life, and I've actually had a few of them, but again, my response varied at times, but this simply means something massive happening in your life that sort of opens up your reality to you. Maybe some new opportunities, maybe some new paths, maybe some some space in your life, like if it was a divorce or, you know, a death of a, of a family member or something like that, that suddenly just kind of threw you into the alternative space and you have to redefine yourself or redefine your reality. So what happened for me, for the people that are new to this channel or new to my story, I had a very, very serious thing. I can't even believe that I'm laughing about it at this point, but now that I've reframed the incident in my mind, I can sort of see how at the time when it happened, you know, I got into this mindset of like, this is the absolute worst thing that's ever happened to me. I just lost everything, including my mind. And now moving away from the incident, I feel as though <laughs> my response was probably extreme, exaggerated. Um, I over dramatized the situation, even though it was a serious situation, it was totally shrouded in negativity, right? I, I had no even, even thread of an idea that, hey, this is something that is ultimately good for you, Renee. Why don't you, I mean, I didn't understand the concept of advantage yet. So I just really viewed the thing as bad, 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 and now, getting away from it, I realized that it was all good. Like every, absolutely every single aspect of what happened to me was good. It just took me some time 
to work with the information that I was given and develop it to an extent where it was all advantage. It all helped me to evolve and, and get up to a higher lifeline ultimately. So what the experience was, I had a medical condition that uh, the doctors prescribed me a very commonly known steroid to help calm down some of the um, some of the symptoms that I was having. It was an autoimmune disorder, and I did not know, and the doctors did not tell me that the steroid, one of the side effects could be sleeplessness and mania, you know, thoughts starting to race and all that kind of stuff. And I started taking the medication. I had just gone through a major breakup. I was living on my own and I was not aware of the side effects. So my mind started to race and I stopped sleeping. And again, I didn't know that it was a side effect of the drug. So I just thought that I was like <laughs> losing my mind. So it's continued to get worse and worse and worse. And I think at the very tail end of it, before the doctors finally had to sedate me, I had gone almost 45 days without any sleep whatsoever. And I had gone down to less than 100 pounds because I stopped eating just because I was so... Um, the, the insomnia speeds up your metabolism. I was panicking, so I didn't, um, you know, I didn't think about self-love and self-care and all that kind of stuff. So I wasted away and I didn't sleep and I thought that I was losing my mind and I slowly um, degraded over about a two month period of time. And then I was finally admitted to a hospital where the doctors figured out exactly what had transpired. But by that point, I had already started to question everything about my life and my reality. And again, not knowing that it was a side effect that was happening as a result of me taking this drug, I started questioning myself and my reality. So by the time the doctors figured out what was going on, I had already come to the conclusion that I was not living the right reality. Now, again, the drug initiated it, but it threw me into a headspace where I started reconsidering and thinking about everything in my life and there was no going back. So even though the doctors had figured out what was going on, I wasn't returning to life as I knew it. And I'd actually left my life entirely. I left Los Angeles, I left my job, I left people. And I decided to go up to the Pacific Northwest to like chill for a while and get my head on straight. And it was at that time that I found reality transurfing. So this is like, not only was I hit by a quantum two by four, but I was also ran over by a quantum fact <laughs> truck. <laughs> I really just had like a complete opening in my reality threw me into the alternative space, right? I was, I was just thrown in and at the time again, I was starting to think like, oh my God, I just lost everything. And I was on this train of thought that my life was unraveling and I didn't know who I was and I didn't know what my purpose was and I was unhappy and I didn't know where I was gonna go. And once I found reality transurfing and I started to read the, the, the knowledge, read, read about the concepts and the information in the book, I slowly started to put the pieces together. I was not living with heart and mind coordination, right? I was not, I was not dialed into my soul frail. I was being ripped apart by pendulums, you know, for the last 35 years of my life. And I started to put the pieces together and take active steps in a new direction using this knowledge, using these concepts and creating a new life for myself. Now, again, six, seven years out, 
I'm like that thing that I perceived as being the worst thing for me was actually the best thing for me because it initiated all this evolution and change, right? So if you are experiencing something in your life right now, an upheaval of sorts, a midlife crisis, here I have them listed, the initiation, right? Which means the initiation of you being thrown into the alternative space, a death, a death of, you know, the death of a family member, a child, a spouse, a loved one, a major change of some kind. This could be you leaving a country that is having conflict of some kind or um, any ma a loss of a job, any major massive change, a health condition. Again, this was mine. I heard a woman on a podcast once saying that being diagnosed with stage three cancer was the absolute best thing that ever happened to her. So the reason is exactly for what I'm talking about here. She was able to reassess everything about her her current trajectory, her reality, her relationship to her reality, and actually start making some changes that was going to allow her to fully uh, enjoy and um, seize, you know, the, 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 the opportunities in the rest of the reality that she had left for her. Um, divorce, a near death experience, a big one, and of course, midlife crisis. So this, this is just to name a few. There's, uh, you know, a lot more than this, obviously, but it can be any massive change in your reality where you start to reconsider things and think about yourself and the relationship to your environment. So what the response can be. Now, these are positive responses. The negative responses are obviously things like just ignoring that something big's happening and staying the course to how you have been conducting yourself in your environment and your reality um, with yourself. And things like denial of these things causing some sort of um, door to open for you, right? This is you just sort of wanting to keep your head down and keep doing what it is you're doing. Maybe you lost your job and you continue to try to just get yourself into a similar position. This is you falling into the, um, you know, patterns that we oftentimes do as human beings where we don't take the opportunity, right? We don't take the opportunity out of fear or, um, you know, fear of failure, all that kind of stuff, but the positive responses. So this is, this is some, you know, something that I'm very familiar with now answering the call, changing course, actually changing directions. It has something happened and you have an opportunity to leave a situation, but you're scared to jump, right? Jumping, listening to your heart, dialing in to your frail. So I know for me in the past with things like a major breakup, right? There were opportunities for me to get in touch with who I really was as a person after a major breakup, but I sort of like denied myself that that opportunity and would jump right back into another relationship. So if you have suddenly um, somebody's exited your life in whatever capacity, you, you now have more time for yourself, maybe it's time to really get into the nuts and bolts of who you are as an individual and dive into that, right? Because it's really these two right here, listening to your heart and dialing in your soul frail. When I experienced my crisis or whatever you want to call it, these were the two things that really, really needed to happen for me. I needed to start listening to my heart and turn down the volume of my mind. And I really needed to dial into my soul frail, like big time. This was the most neglected part of who I was as a person. I was totally living by the pendulum standards. I had no idea who I was. My individuality was almost non-existent and me taking the opportunity to dial into my soul frail is exactly what has 
allowed me to arrive at this moment today. So what the result is, this moment now, right? A new life track, a new worldview, new opportunities, evolution, personal evolution, and most valuably, access to meta power. So if you have not yet read Tufty live stroll through a movie, meta power is our ability to create reality that is behind the mirror, right? Oftentimes we are attempting to change reality in the moment, change physical reality in this current frame. And what Vadim Zeeland offers us in this book is that we have the power to affect reality behind the mirror amalgam, then bringing that version of reality into physical reality. When I was lost, in my pre-transurfing reality and didn't know who I was, wasn't dialed into my soul frail, wasn't listening to my heart, um, you know, wasn't willing or able to change course or answer a new call. This was me working in that physical reality, right? Inner intention, me pushing, striving, um, using my will, using my ego, all that kind of stuff. And once I got that smack by that two by four and started to switch over to this knowledge as being my mode of operation, what happened is my ability to see that there were a lot more variations of reality open and available to me, then I was able to actually take this knowledge and start doing something with it. So, it's almost like that version of me that ha that experienced the crisis was working just in that current frame, trying to change reality in the moment and not able to see anything beyond what I was experiencing. Once I got hit and I realized that there's another mode of operation, all this stuff here, then I started to truly have the meta power and the ability to work with reality on the other side of the mirror, creating more results of what I want to see in my physical reality right now. And I know that's a little esoteric and maybe a little bit ambiguous, but once you've had something like this happen to you, that's why a lot of times people that have near death experiences really um, excel afterwards, right? Is because they see that sort of crack in, in reality and they realize it could have all just been gone and they start operating in a new way that allows them access to higher and better variations of reality, if that makes sense. So my question for you before I wrap this video up has something like this happened to you and you are challenged to frame that thing in a positive, shroud it in positivity, right? That there is absolutely benefit. And as Vadim Zeeland says, no event in reality is either all good or all bad, especially with the bad. Every event has attributes of both. So even all this stuff, even the worst, like the loss of a child or, you know, a very serious medical condition, you know, flaring up or a diagnosis or something like that, all of this, all of this sort of um, information, all these sorts of events absolutely have a, a, a dimension of positivity there if you are willing to really stand back and take a look at what has transpired from a, a perspective of non-duality. And then as soon as you can do that, as soon as you can start to see something as possibly having positive, um, you know, positive, uh, something positive there to work with, then all of a sudden some new information starts to come through, which ultimately will give you the results if you decide to seize that new information, right? Me finding reality transurfing. 
if that had not happened to me, that, that bad experience, those words popping up on my phone that day, reality transferring, probably wouldn't have gotten through, right? So it was that thing that sort of cracked my reality wide open and then the information was able to come through. I could see it, I could grab onto it, I could harness it and use it, which has since cr created positive results for me in my life. So anything that's happened to you, start working with it and view it as a crack that's opened up and really pay attention to what's coming through. Start working with that. Don't just put your head down and try to stay the course that you're on. Take that opportunity. And as you see this stuff develop and start to flourish in your reality, then you can simply add fuel to that fire, meta power, all that kind of stuff, and see this stuff exponentially continue to evolve, right? That's exactly what I've done with reality transferring since I was hit by my quantum two by four and run over by my quantum Mac truck. So let me know your thoughts on this one, everybody. I'm definitely curious. Have you had something like this go down? And what has that meant for you and your reality? Talk about it in the comments. I'm curious to know. And thank you so much for watching my video, everyone. Bye.